Okay, so this seminar uh, is about logs and exponentials. Uh, and before I got properly going on that, I just wanted to show um, you where to find resources on some of these things. So if you go to the Maths Learning Centre's website, you'll see it says here resources. And there's all these particular courses. So if you're doing a particular course such as, say, chemistry, uh, you can find a page for that course here and you'll see that there's um, links to various things on the Maths Bridge uh, which look like this gives you a test to see and you can go and find notes and it will explain how some of those things work and you can also um, download worksheets about logarithms and that sort of thing here but you can also find these directly um, under the handouts. So there's revision worksheets covering stuff that's in Year 12 Maths, like logarithms, uh, summaries of other things, and various things. So I just want to point out that they are there. Um, I will put links to the appropriate logarithms ones uh, under this seminar as well, so that they're multiply linked so you can find them. Okay, but this is the first video that we will have made on it. Okay, so I'm going to talk about exponentials and logarithms um, because they're a different kind of, of uh, thing that you can do uh, to numbers. It comes up a lot in things like chemistry, um, actually a lot in chemistry do logarithms, uh, and powers and exponentials do as well. So I'll start with exponentials and then I'll talk about uh, logarithms. Sometimes exponentials are called indices and sometimes they are called powers. In case you are uh, looking for them uh, online, you'll know that that's what they're called. So the most fundamental level, um, there are relationships between numbers um, that are what they call linear. Okay, so let me just talk about it in terms of taking some numbers and performing some sort of action and producing a set of outputs. So, for example, you might have a list of numbers and you might want to, maybe we'll call them X, and you might want to do some stuff up to them to produce new numbers and you actually might want to try and guess what's been done to them in order to produce the numbers um, that we get. So for example, I could do this. So what's been done there is I've multiplied all those numbers by 2. Okay, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times um, 2 is 6 and so on. But you can also see that um, as I've started with the number 0 and I've added the same amount every time. Okay, so I've done a plus 2 and a plus 2 and a plus 2 and a plus 2. And that came out to doing the same as times 2 this way. So if I have a nice even sequence of numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 um, and I have a new sequence which is 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I can create, I can figure out what number in the new sequence matches with the position it's in um, by just times in by 2. And that's the idea of a linear function. So a linear function is two things. It's either um, a function is something that you do to numbers that spit, takes numbers in and spits things out. So either you think of it as, well, a linear function is multiplying by something, um, or you think of it as, as starting at a particular spot and just continuing to add over and over and over. 
And that's how multiplication was when you first learned it when you were, when you were very small. You learned that multiplication was, was addition over and over and over, and multiplication was a shortcut to do all of that all at once. Well, powers are a different thing. What if I started at 1 instead of starting at 0? And instead of adding um, every time, I multiplied every time. So what if I multiplied by 2, and then multiplied by 2 again, 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 and then multiplied by 2 again. And so I get this sequence of numbers. I started at 1 and I kept multiplying by 2. And so when I'm up to 6 um, on one side, I'm up to 64 on the other. Um, and, you know, for example, if I got up to 10, then on, on the x side, then I'd end up with 1,024 on the other side. And what we want is a notation or a machine that instead of having to times 2 that many times, goes directly from the 6 to the 64. And the name for that is powers. To the power of 6 um, will produce the answer 64. And that's the idea behind it. It's not really a notation. <coughs> when you first learned it, it's about repeated multiplication. But it's really about trying to find a way of creating a notation that lines these numbers up when they're, added, when they're lined up that way. So, just as a definition, um, I'm going to do my definition by examples. To to the power of six is the number you get to by starting at one and timesing by two six times. And I know that that starting at one is a bit redundant, um, but it does help me remind remind me that what I've done is I've started somewhere and I've multiplied by two six times. So that's called 2 to the power of 6, um, and we write it as 2, with a little 6 at the top, as 2 to the power of 6. Okay? And this number up here is called an exponent, or an index, or a power. So if I had something written down and I said, you know, 5 to the power of 8, um, and I asked what's the index, then, then, then you would say 8. So that is why they're called exponentials or indices or powers. Um, indices is the plural of index. So if you ever look something up and it says index laws, it means the laws for powers. Okay, so that, that's what it means um, if you have a whole number up there in the power. Um, but the idea is that it might be possible to have a non-whole number up there and then you're trying to fill in the gaps in between those things that I drew before. So what we can start to do is we know what it is for a whole number, okay? We know that 5 to the 3 is the same as starting at 1 and going times 5 times 5 times 5 which gives me 125 and 10 to the 4 is... which gives me 10,000, and so on. Okay? So that's what it is for nice whole numbers. And mathematicians have tried to figure out what it is for other numbers. Because the idea is that if I had 2 to the power of... Here's 2 to the power of 2 here, and here's 2 to the power of 3 here. If I had 2 to the power of 2 and a half, it must be somewhere between two, 4 and 8. Don't know what it is, but it's somewhere between them. And I have to consistently sort of fill all that in so that all the rules work properly. Um, and so it doesn't just work for whole numbers. Um, I need to find some way of having some machine to tell me what's, what ridiculous decimal has to be between 4 and 8 that gives me 2 to the power of 2.5. And so here are some of the rules for the other numbers.
anything to the power of zero is one. Because the concept is you always start at one and then you multiply by however many numbers of twos. So one, two to the power of one is one times two. Two to the power of two is one times two times two. Two to the power of three is one times two times two times two. So two to the power of zero would be one times no twos, and so I would stay at one. And that's true of any number at all, you know? Um, five to the power of zero is one, ten to the power of zero is one. Any number to the power of zero is one. So that's our rule number one. That's our rule number, whatever that is, beginning with um, a two. Okay. Um, and then there's another rule which says... So you can imagine that means start at one and multiply by half a two, but what does it mean by half a two? It's not really multiplying by one. Um, this means the square root. So a half power means a square root. And so this is going to be, you know, 1.41 and something. So uh, mathematicians have decided that the best way to fill in the half powers is to use um, roots. So a half power of 2 <coughs> is a root 2. So that means that if I had 2 to the power of 3.5, that would be 1 and I'd have my three twos and then a half of a 2 which is a root 2 and so that will come out to whatever we end up with and that's like eight, 8 root 2 which is something in my calculator Eleven point three one, approximately now I just want to point out how to do powers on a calculator um, while I'm at it. So in a calculator, some calculators have a button like this which looks like a caret sign. So so if I wanted to do 2 to the power of 3.5 in my calculator I would do my number 2, the caret button and 3.5 Cool, comes out to the same answer, I've done it right But some calculators, uh, this button is called x to the y So just be aware of that um, And that's how you do a power in a calculator Okay, so I can just check some of the other ones that I've done before um, 10 to the power of 0 Yep, my calculator knows that that ought to be 1. And 5 to the power of 3, my calculator knows that that ought to be 125. Okay, so my maths and the calculator are matching, so they're both, well, I'm assuming they're both right. Okay, so that's calculating powers. We can get our calculator to fill in the gaps. So the calculator has been programmed carefully so that it can fill in the gaps between any whole number powers. So we know that 2 to the 3.5 had to be between 2 to the 3 and 2 to the 4 uh, I should say that I'm just saying that aloud as 2 to the and I'm not saying power, that's okay 2 to the power of 3.5 is between 2 to the 3 and 2 to the 4 uh, which means it must be between 8 and 16 which it is, it's 11.31 and so you can fill in all the gaps in between the whole number of powers um, with, with decimals um, in between okay, that's powers there are rules for working with powers in terms of algebra, in terms of calculations, which mean that you can do a little bit of uh, work on the paper in rearranging uh, before um, you can do the calculating so that it makes it easier. Uh, okay, that's all right. I didn't get to the other one, but I will do that in just a second. No, sorry, I just have one more rule one more example to do you do. So we have put in uh, positive numbers, we know what to do with all the numbers in between the whole numbers, we know what to do with zero. Next is what do we do with the negative numbers? Three to the power of negative five. Well, let's just think about this. If there was a plus five up there, that would mean one times three times three times three times three times three. Okay, so let me write that down. 1 to the plus 5, 1 
two, three, four, five. But a negative power, in the same way that the plus five up there corresponds to multiplication, the minus sign up there corresponds to division. Okay, so it means start at one and divide by three five times. Okay, that's what a negative power means. So to compare it to the positive powers, the positive powers are about multiplying by three, the negative powers are about dividing by three. And it also happens to come out to the same answer as what you get is if you figured out what 3 to the 5 was and did 1 divided by that answer, it would come out to the same answer as 3 to the negative 5. So dividing by 3 5 times is the same as figuring out what 3 to the 5 is and dividing by that instead. So the classic example is to say that 2 to the minus 1 is a half because it's the same as 1 over 2 to the power of 1 and 2 to the power of 1 is just 2. So anything to the minus 1 is just 1 over that number. And all the other numbers can be filled in in between. Okay? So you can write these rules in algebra speak. So, my first rule is any number to the power of 0 is always 1, as long as that number is a positive number. Um, okay? And it also says that if I do, the other rules is any number to a negative power. Okay, they're the definitions of what those mean. So you can imagine that this is my 3 and my 5 is the same as 1 over 3 to the power of 5, like that. Uh, and then, so just as an example, I'll put examples on the side. E.g. 3 to the power of 0 is 1. E.g. 3 to the power of minus 5 is the same as 1 over 3 to the 5. And the other rule is that you can actually, knowing that 3 to the power of 5 is 3, time, three times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and 3 to the power of 4 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, then 3 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 4 is just multiplying all those 3's together. So there's this rule that says that anything to a power times the same thing to a different power, I'll be able to add the powers together. So multiplication down here is the same as addition up there. So for example, 3 to the power of 5 times 3 to the power of 4 will be 3 to the power of 9. So this is, the, this is an extremely clever trick that, that powers do. Okay, so if I... 3 to the power of 5 and 3 to the power of 4 comes out 3 to the power of 9. When we multiply them, when you add them, nothing happens at all. There's just nothing you can do. You have to figure them out separately. But if there's a times down here, that means it becomes a plus up in the power. And that's simply because... 3 to the power of 5 is... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 3 to the power of 4 is 1, 2, 3, 4 and that's the same as going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 because there's 9 of them and that's why it works the way it does okay so um, but it doesn't just work that way with whole numbers it works that way with all numbers of any kind. They don't have to be whole numbers. They can be decimals, they can be negative. So I can do another example where I do like, you know, 6 to the power of minus 2 times 6 to the power of 0 0.5 times 6 to the power of 7 will be the same as 6 to the power of 7 minus 2 is 5, so that'll be the power of 5.5. Because you can just add all the powers together whenever you multiply. Okay? It doesn't have to be with whole numbers. And then, in the same way that your power's multiplication down below becomes addition up above, um, it turns division into subtraction.
So this division between the two, two calculations, division between them turns into subtraction up above. So the 6 minus 4 is 2. So we've looked to see how powers interact with division in this way, and we've looked to see how powers interact with multiplication when the base is the same. There are two other ways for powers to interact, um, as several other ways, but the other one is to see if you have the same thing and we have a power of a power, then the numbers will multiply. Oop, they're the same. Like that. If you have a power of a power, they'll multiply. So my example is... ten cubed, 10 to the power of 3 to the power of 2 will be 10 to the power of 6. So if you've got a power of a power, then all these powers just multiply by each other and give you 6. So they're the rules for multiplication. The reason you need to know those is when you're working in scientific notation, you can leverage your, your rules of how powers work to help you um, deal with that. And just while I'm at it, there's just a couple more. I've shown you what it looks like when I divide two numbers that already have a powers in them. So as long as the bottom number on each of these is the same, I can turn that into a subtraction up in the powers. What if instead we had the power on the outside of a division? Something like that. Well, I'm allowed to do the power separately. So for example, two-thirds squared, I can bring the power in separately and that's giving me four-ninths. Okay, and it works for multiplication as well. Like that. So as an example, well, maybe not with an n, 3 squared. Here's 3 squared times 10 squared, which is 9 times 100, which is 900. So in your head you can figure out 330 squared because you can do 3 squared and 10 squared and multiply them together. That's powers. And there's a whole lot of algebra stuff that goes with powers. I just want to show you one more example just to show you some things um, before I move on to logarithms. I want to talk about scientific notation just briefly. Remember that scientific notation is a way of describing how big numbers are based on the powers of 10. Okay, So in the scientific notation, I might have a number like you know, 5.83 times 10 to the 6. And what that means is that this number is really... Well, the 10 to the 6 is really 1 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. So that there is what the 10 to the 6 is. So when I say 5.83 times 10 to the power of 6, what it really means is this, which means that the number is really 5.83 times 10 would be 58.3, times another 10 would be 583, times another 10 would be 5,830, times another 10 uh, would be that number 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. Okay, so it's really just shorthand for powers of 10. Um, and powers of 10 have a neat way of working with our decimal system of moving the decimal place around. Okay, whereas 1.07 times 10 to the minus 3, well, remember that negative powers are really division. 
So 10 to the minus 3 is the same as dividing by 10 three times. If I divide by 10, it will get smaller, and then smaller again, and then smaller again. So it got smaller, it got smaller, it got smaller again. Okay, so that's uh, what it really means. And in a calculator, there is a special button specifically for powers of 10. Um, you don't actually have to literally write in your calculator If you wanted 1.03 times 10, 1.07 times 10 to the minus 3, you don't have to type literally in your calculator the, type, the power sign, because you can do, come on, 1.03 times, no, nope, don't need the times, exp, negative 3. That's how to do times 10 to the minus 3. And look at typing it in there like that. Okay? Um, I should be able to. Oh, it's currently in scientific mode, I think. Um, and that's the same as 0 0.00107. But I can ask it to do times 10 to the minus 3 using the EXP button. Okay, that's what that's for. Okay, so my example that I wanted to show was um, something like this. I've got two numbers and they're both in scientific notation and I multiply them. Well, the rules of multiplication say that I can do multiplication in whatever order I want as long as the powers stay with the numbers that they're attached to. So when I look at this, I can separate this into pieces and think, just a second, I've got plain numbers here. And then I've got powers here. And so this will be the same as 3.80 times 1.25 times 10 to the minus 6 times 10 to the 8. When you multiply powers, the powers add. So 10 to the 6 minus 6 and 10 to the 8, I'll get 8 minus 6, which will be 2. And that can sometimes shortcut your working ever so slightly in a chemistry problem if they happen to cancel each other out. 3.80 times 1.25. Four hundred and seventy five. All right, that's powers. I do have one more thing to show you on the scientific notation front. This cube here is a millim is a milliliter. That's how big a milliliter is, it's that big. Um, and when I times by 10, that's 10 milliliters, right? So that's 10 to the power of 1. And so when I have 10 to the power of 1, I get one of these. That's 10 millilitres. Now if I times that by 10 again, so remember powers is just continuing to multiply by 10, I'll have uh, 1 times 10 is 10, and then 10 times 10 would be 100. I have 10 of these all stacked up, and there's my 100. So I started with 1, that's 10 to the 1. I'm going to write them down on a piece of paper. So this is 1, which is 10 to the 0. And this is 10, which is 10 to the 1. 
and this is 100, which is 10 to the power of 2. And the reason the power of 2 is called 10 squared because it's a square. So if I times by 10 again, you can imagine stacking up 10 of these um, squares. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And what I'll make is a cube. In fact, I have one of those. A cube. Okay, this is a thousand because it's times ten again. So one thousand is ten cubed. Okay, that's my cube. And the reason it's 10 cubed is because it's a cube. Now, if this is a milliliter, which it is, this is a thousand milliliters, that's a liter. Okay, so the difference between a milliliter and a liter is that difference there. That's a milliliter, that's a liter. Um, it's just useful to see how big they are relative to each other. Right, so that's powers. That was great, love powers. The next thing we want to know about is logarithms. Now logarithms look really fancy. They look like a really fancy thing to do and they confuse a lot of people. And mainly the reason they confuse a lot of people uh, is because no one teaches them how to do it. Um, and, but they're lot, they seem really confusing and actually it takes a long time to get used to them if this is the first, if it's the first time you've ever seen them. So don't feel bad if they take a while to get used to. But what I want to say is they're not really any more difficult than powers. Um, in the sense of conceptually, they're not. It's just trying to do the same trick backwards. So I'm going to go back to the beginning. And I'm going to draw the same thing I had before. So I'm going to start with 1 and I'm going to keep timesing by 2. So if I times by 2 here, I'll get 4. If I times by 2 here, I'll get 8 and 16 and 32 and 64. Okay? And I know that with the powers I can fill in all the gaps there. My question is, what if I knew this and I need to figure out what was on the other side? What if I knew that I had 16 and I wanted to know which number does it line up with on this, ax on this um, side here? I know I started at 0 and kept adding 1 here. And on this side I started at 1 and kept multiplying by 2. How do I know where I'm up to if I just saw randomly the number 16? That's what logarithms are for. So to go this way, 2 to the power of 6 gives me 64. To go this way, log 2 of 64 gives me 6. The idea of logarithms is to do powers backwards. Log 2 of 64 is asking the question... So you read it aloud as log 2 of 64. Okay. It's asking the question... Starting at 1, how many 2's do I multiply to get 64? That's what it's asking. And so I start and I go, OK, so I start at 1. Times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16, times 2 is 32, times 2 is 64. I've counted two, two, 6 2's being multiplied, so the answer is 6. Okay, log 2 of 64 is asking, how many did I get there? So numbers that are connected by powers are connected in the opposite direction by logs. Okay, 
The other way of thinking about it is to say, or, to the power of what is 64? What is this number? That number is whatever the answer is from log 2 of 64. And it's a 6, that's the number that has to go there. That's what a logarithm is. But the key behind a logarithm is not really to try and figure out what number goes in that spot. It's really trying to find a way of tying the numbers that we have here to a, to a set of numbers that just keep adding by 1. Okay, so I could ask myself... What is log 3 of 17? Okay, I could ask that my, my question. So let's, let's try it. So we started at 1, and 1 is 3 to the 0, and 3 to the 0 is 1, 3 to the 1 is 3, 3 squared is 9, because I just keep timesing by 3, 3 cubed is 27. Okay, so 17 is in here somewhere. So that means that log 3 of 17 is whatever number goes here, right? I'm interested in answering the question of 3 to the what is 17. So this number here must be somewhere between 2 and 3. Don't know what it is, but that's what it is. So that's telling me that that number is log 3 of 17, which is 2 point something. I don't know what it is. Okay. Now calculators are not nearly so nice at doing powers as they are doing logs as they are of doing powers. Okay, so I'm going to have to show you how to do that. But a, a, a calculator can at least do log 10. Okay. But you don't need a calculator to do log 10 most of the time. My question is, how many 10s do I have to multiply together to get this answer? Well, it's 1, 2, 3, it's 4. So this is saying 10 to the what comes out to 10,000. Oh, well that's 4. That number there is log 10 of 1,000, of 10,000, which is 4 because that's the number that needs to go there. So if you have a number that's a multiple of 10, log 10 of 10 is 1, log 10 of 100 is 2, log 10 of 1,000 is 3, log 10 of 10,000 is 4. It's just the number of zeros on the end. And so if I asked myself, What is log 10 of 587? Well, 587 is somewhere between 100 and 1,000. So let's look at this. Well, log 10 of 100 is uh, 2. It's got two zeros. Log 10 of 1,000 is uh, 3, because it's got three zeros. So log 10 of 587 will be 2 point something. I know it's somewhere between 2 and 3. My calculator will tell me what it is, because it's got a handy dandy log 10 calculator. This button here that says log, that is log 10. It doesn't mean the log as that we write log 317, it's just the straight log 10. So let's just check that it's working. Log 10 of 10,000 is 4. Log 10 of 587 is 2.7686 and so on. Okay, so I knew it was between 2 and 3. It's actually 2.7-ish. So note that it doesn't work. It's not a clean straight line um, because it didn't go up nice and, and smooth and straight when it was whole numbers. So I know that even though 500 is nearly halfway, it's actually almost 3 quarters of the way in terms of logs. Okay, this is 2.75. Okay, so you can have a guess at how big a log would have to be, um, but your calculator can tell you what it is. Alright, so that's what logarithms are for. So um, the classic place that logarithms turn up um, in physics is when you're calculating decibels um, in terms of sound intensity. 
And the classic place that logarithms turn up in chemistry is when you're calculating pH. Um, and so the reason, I think the reason we use chem, um, logarithms in those settings is because of the way that those things increase in intensity is not in an addition sort of way. It increases in a multiplication sort of way. So when an acid um, gets 10 times as many um, hydrogen atoms in it, it only really gets one times worse. Okay, So that's why pH works the way it is. When a sound is 10 times as in 10 times as intense, to us it only sounds one extra louder. Okay, So to make something to, to us sound twice as loud, we're going to have to make it a hundred times as loud um, in terms of the amount of things you need. So to make something properly, like if, I had, if I had a guitar playing, I'd actually need ten of them for it to actually sound twice as loud. Okay, Because I need to multiply by ten to get to the next size. So when things work that way, when they behave in a sort of a multiplication sort of way in order to get to the next stage, logarithms help us to, to have a better feel for how the change is working. Okay, That's the idea behind it. Um, Alright, so um, I've just better put some rules for logs. So logs are the opposite of powers. Okay, when I have 2 to the power of 6 gives me 64, well log 2 of 64 gives me uh, 6 and so they, they go backwards to each other so all the rules for logs are the opposite of the rules for, for powers so I'm just going to compare them to each other with powers times down here was plus up here but with logs Plus out here is times in here. It's the opposite. This one turns times as outside to pluses inside. This one goes the other way. Pluses outside becomes times as inside. Okay, they're the opposite. So with with powers, when I did a division, it turned division outside into subtraction inside. Logs are the opposite. Logs turn. Um, subtraction outside into division inside. Okay. And with powers like that, powers outside became multiplication inside. With power, when you're doing exponents, but with logs, it's the other way around. Powers inside become multiplication outside. And they're the basic rules of logs. The other rules of logs, so we know that anything to the power of 0 is 1. That tells, so the 1 is on the outside, the 0 is on the inside. With logs it's the other way around. The 1 is on the inside and the 0 is on the outside. Okay, they're the opposite way around. So they're the, the basic rules for logs. Um, you don't have much call to use them, but what you do use them for um, is, yes, the most important rule for logs and powers is this one. A to the power of log A, B, is B. Okay? That's the whole point of logs. They do the opposite of what powers do. And so if I do a power and then the matching log, it'll undo what I just did. And it works the same the other way around.
if I do a log and then the matching power, um, it'll give do nothing. And that means that you can solve equations that have powers using logs. Okay? Uh, before I finish off with the rules, I do have one more rule to show you, which is really helpful for using calculators. I can convert any log into log 10. So just as an example, this is how to do it in my calculator. If I want to know what log 2 of 1024 was, I could say, well, that's the same as log 10 of 1024, which you're allowed to write as just log if you want, over log 10 of 2. So log of 1024 divided by log 2 gives me exactly 10. So let's just check to see if our answer is right. If log 2 the power of, uh, log 2 of 1024 is actually 10, that's the same as asking how many 2's do I have to multiply together to give 1024? And it's telling me the answer is 10. So if this is right, then 2 to the power of 10 should come out to 1024. So let's see. Let's see if I've got it right. 2 to the power of 10 is 1024. Cool. So my calculator can now calculate any log I like if I use this formula and convert it to just log base 10. Now I know I'm going over time, but I did want one last thing. For solving equations. So there are times when you have powers or you have logs in an equation and you need to figure out what the missing number is and um, you're going the way to do that is to use the way that logs and, and powers are related to each other. Okay so um, for an example um, what is it? pH is minus log 10 of h plus like that and suppose you were told you knew what the pH was and you had to figure out what the the concentration of h plus was okay so suppose suppose pH equals 7 you know 7.35 what is the concentration of h plus okay I'm going to show you how you would go about solving that equation. So the pH is really 7.35 and I need to somehow turn this into an equation that says H plus equals. So that's what I'm aiming for. I need this. I need to know what number H plus is. So in the same way as I solve all equations, I need to analyse what's been done to the H plus to get to that 7.35. So what's been done is the closest thing is the log 10 and then the minus and it's produced that. So I need to do it in the opposite order. Um, well, if I added an extra minus to both sides, the minus minus would cancel out. Okay, so I could just go add an extra minus and then that minus minus makes a plus. But just a second, log 10 of h plus is the same question as what do I have to do, what power of 10 do I have to do to get h plus? So actually, this is the same as saying 10 to the power of minus 7.35 is h plus. But most people find it really difficult to manage that process, and so it's easier to think about, well just a second, what would I have to do to this to make the log 10 go away? I would need to do a 10 to the power of. So I'll copy down exactly what I have here. And 
and I'll go, right, I'm going to do 10 to the power of both of those things. So, 10 to the power of minus 7.35, I'll need a calculator for that, that's whatever that is. Let's ask it. 10 to the power of minus 7.35 is 4.46 times 10 to the minus 8. Okay? And 10 to the power of log 10 of something always produces whatever the something is. So the concentration of H plus is 4.46 times 10 to the minus 8. Which is an extremely tiny number, but it's always tiny. So the key part of this was this step here, where I copied exactly what I had and I put 10 to the power of both of them. And then the 10 to the power of and the log base 10, 10 to the power of and then log base 10 together doesn't do anything. And so that comes out to the same answer as whatever's inside it. So in the opposite direction, one more example. What if I had one that was powers already? Okay. Um, well, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but there's a classic one which is to do with um, um, exponential decay. So what if I had something that said, I'm just going to have to make a random one up. What if I had that? 1,586 is 600 e to the minus 12 t. And I need to figure out what t is. So I'm going to do exactly what I would always do. I would analyse what's been done to the t and then do it in the opposite order. So let's see. First I times the t by minus 12. Then I chuck it inside the power of e. And e is a number in your calculator, by the way. Um, it's about 2.7. And then I multiplied it by 600 and the answer was 1586. So I'm going to have to do all those things in the opposite order. Okay, so... This is currently being multiplied, so I will have to divide it. So over here, 600 times 600 divided by 600, though, well, that overall doesn't do anything. And then... give myself plenty of decimal places so I don't lose accuracy. And here's my thing. I need to somehow get rid of this E. So I'll do what I always do. I'll write down exactly what I've got. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do log base E. Because when you, do, when you have E to the power of, the way to get rid of that is to do log base E. That's what log base E is for. And you should know that log base E in your calculator is called LN. So this here is the same as log base E. So your calculator, you'll notice, has not just a log button, but an LN button. That LN stands for log base E. It's, lit, it's French, actually. It's logarithm naturale. Um, and that's the one that it goes with. It goes with the number E. So I'll ask my calculator, what is ln of that answer that I just got? And it's 0 0.97204. And ln and E, log E and E to the power of, well, log to base anything and that's the anything to the power Together they don't do anything because one does the opposite of the other and so they disappear. And now I'll copy exactly what I have here and I don't want this minus 12 here, it's currently being multiplied so I will divide by it. So distressingly my t comes out as negative which is sad.
So I'll divide that by minus 12 and get Okay, so the key point I want to make here is that the moment you want to get rid of a log, you should do the matching power. And the moment you want to get rid of a power, you should do the matching log. The matching log to E is ln, the matching log to, um, matching log to 10 is log 10. And if you don't know how to do the matching log because your calculator doesn't do it, you can do whichever one you want. That one there. 280 is 2 to the x. Well, if I want to get rid of a 2, I should do a log base 2. But there's no log base 2 button on my calculator. So I can do whatever log I want and use the power of logs. So let's do log base 10. The rules for logs say that powers inside the logs is multiplication outside the logs. So I haven't changed my 280, but the rules for logs say that this is the same as this. Powers inside is the same as multiplication outside. And so now I can say, just a second, x is currently being multiplied by whatever log 2 is, and so to make that go away, I should divide by it, because then Timesing by that and dividing by that doesn't do anything. And so, log 280 divided by log 2. Just let me, I'll put brackets in it just in case. I'm pretty sure it does the logs first. 8.129 Let me just check, that seems right I'm 2 to the 7 no, 2 to the 8 is 256 and 2 to the 9 is the next one up so it should be 8 point something so that's good, that's a good start ok, so that's solving equations with logs um, logs are really invented as a way of getting rid of powers. Okay, So when you see a log equation like the pH equation, like this one here, the reason we have that there is look at the pH. The pH is 4.46 times 10 to the minus 8. I want to get at this minus 8 here, this power that's here. And so I do a log 10 and you'll see that it comes out of 7.35, which is almost 8. So I'm trying to figure out, well, what's the power that's there? And that's why I've done a log 10, to pull the power out. Okay? Logs are designed to get rid of power, to pull out what's in the power. So there you go. That's all I have to say about logs for today. Thank you. And um, I'll, next time I'll be talking about graphs, or graphs if you like.